So we're here today with Mr. Danny Langston, a local drummer from Baldock in Hertfordshire. So I met Danny back in 2013, wasn't it? 2013, yeah. Two years ago. Um, basically, I started the studio and he was one of the first uh, people that approached me about uh, maybe coming to teach here. So uh, I remember getting him in and seeing him play. And he was like, I mean, I'd seen quite a few local drummers and he was the first one who was like a really kind of fully rounded, technically superb drummer. So I was, I was really impressed when I saw him and he, he started uh, teaching here and um, he's been, well, I, professional drummer now for a few years so I just wanted to have a little little chat with him just to give people an, an insight as well as to like how you can get into what he's doing and the kind of work he's put in to get where he is today. Cheers, Thanks. I like that, that was a nice nice introduction, I had yeah. so many compliments for a while. How did it all start? So how, how old were you, like what, what made you start playing drums? I started I think when I was 11 or 12, okay. I remember as it, it was before, like just before like year seven of secondary school. I think that's about that age. Yeah, that's about 11. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. My dad was always into music, but none of my family particularly played any instruments. Uh, I remember one time getting on my friend's kit who had lessons. I think everyone thinks this, but I thought I was like naturally really good. Yeah. I think I was, but you don't really know at that age. Nah, yeah. And just sort of seemed to love drums more than any other instrument. So just went for that. Used to have pots and pans before I got any drum kits. Mm -hmm. Just played around. Just always interested interested in it, yeah. And in terms of like the music you're into when you like started playing drums, that was the kind of main kind of music you were listening to. Back then, uh, did you remember Kerrang? Kerrang, yeah. It was it was like cool. typical that age kind of boy music of like the Linkin Park, Sun Forty One. Papa Roach, Blink. Blink like, yeah, all the like yeah. proper typical. What is that? What is that? It's like it's rock, obviously. Yeah, it's like Chili's would have been massive then as well. Yeah, just the, the typical Kerrang was like what I always remember. That was whatever was on Kerrang was like the new thing that I like. I used to get the CDs and things. Yeah, that that was like, and it's it's quite, I guess, not drum orientated, but it's 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 fun. That type of stuff is yeah, like fast. It's a bit heavy, Nothing right? subtle about it. Uh -huh. I think I like that though. No, that's true. And then, like, I think people who play music, like, they were more into that music. A lot of people listen to R and B and like poppy stuff, but like that kind of music seemed kind of real, didn't it? Like, yeah, true. I think yeah, when people get older, they develop more into that kind of like the, again the less the more subtle music. But that is just a lot of the beats are. It's like your first beat as well. Mm -hmm. Things I play along, and they just yeah, it's like they're getting rock beat but aggressive. Yeah, it's like yeah. You, can, you can you can understand what's going on without having that much of a knowledge. Yeah, that's it. I haven't thought about it like that, but yeah. <laughs> and, and in terms of like, did you have any like particular favourite bands or like favourite drummers from that from that, that kind of scene of music? I'm trying to think of when I was, when I was young if I did or not. Uh, again, it's the sort of the standard ones that you think, like Chad Smith would have been just, because it's just Chili's, everyone loves that. Mm -hmm. I remember one of my first snares was the Chad Smith signature yeah. snare drum. Uh, the old pearl. Yeah, and I didn't really know, didn't really know particular drummers then, anyway. I just where my dad listened to as well, and he was like a big rock fan as well. Right. Like all Metallica and Rage Against the Machine and stuff, okay. which I thought was the coolest thing for dad. Okay, so it's more like a general kind of genre you were into. Yeah. Just playing that hip. When I first started, you know, yeah, <laughs> it wasn't like, it was just all drummers basically. I didn't have, I, ne I never had like an idol as such. Mm -hmm. I probably did more when I got older. But, mm -hmm. Do you have like Karen posters on your wall and stuff? My, <laughs> my mum <laughs> graffitied my room like really well wow. with, with that. No, it's funny you said that, but with like, Karen was, and there was all like this, the album logos on my wall with like Sun Fo One and, and Lincoln Park and stuff. Yeah. Although she kind of guessed. I remember this is typical, but she had Nickelback as well. It was like the only one I didn't like, even though I actually like them now, which is funny, unpopular, man. you know. <laughs> That's cool. It's funny you said that, I did actually have them completed on my walls. By so. your mum? Yeah, it's yeah. It's cool parents, isn't it? In terms of like other things going on when you were that age, like was, was drums your main thing or do you have like other hobbies and stuff? Uh, I used to skateboard. I felt like I was a very typical, typical like, what was that, early teen, mm -hmm. drumming and skateboarding and I remember thinking that was like the coolest things ever. When I first started lessons, I'd skate to the lessons holding drumsticks. Wow. I remember being like, man, 
These guys are gonna think, yeah, look at this, I'm, I'm both of these. So it all like kind of started as like a kind of um, thing with your friends, with your friends. When when did it get a bit more serious? Like when did you start like, taking lessons and things like that? I had lessons as, as soon as possible, really. Basically, as soon as I jumped on that guy's kit, right. and I didn't get a drum kit for a while. But uh, but yeah, basically year seven. But I start I started band as soon as possible, basically. What before lessons? As, like, soon, as soon as I got a drum kit, I basically found because I've just moved to year seven, so I had like to a new school, so a load of new friends, and basically found like one guy I'd just learned to play guitar, okay. one guy I'd been playing bass for a little bit, and we sort of became friends through that. And like every new beat I got taught was like the new song, and you'd sort of sculpt it around that. So yeah. It was like a perfect <laughs> way to learn. Yeah, yeah, you could come, come in my tiny little room and try and yeah. write whatever we could then. So can you remember who your first teacher was? Matt Watson. Matt Watson. Yeah, a guy in Bulldogs up the road. I had him for quite a few years, I think. He was luckily a very fun teacher as well, so I think it was like a really nice start to it. Mm -hmm. And he used to get on piano and play bass, and we'd like do a lot of like jamming. Again, the same thing, he'd teach you a beat, and then that beat would be used perfectly in context. Right, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Instead of just like having it as just drums. Yeah, I mean, how did you find lessons initially? Like, I guess he's kind of answered it a bit there, but like, did you learn like things like rudiments, things like when that started coming in? Like, were you kind of interested in that? Or? I, I, I think about this when teaching here a lot actually, because right. I try and think of like what what I would want. But I think I was lucky in the way that I I think actually people do more than more than you expect. But I really like the whole rudiment side. Mm -hmm. So if they told me to like learn a paradiddle it wouldn't, I'd, I'd rarely be the one to be like, but why I don't see this helping. I'd mm. be like, cool, right, I'm gonna sit down and make yeah. sure that I do right, left, right, right, left, right, as long as I can. Mm -hmm. So I remember actually loving that side of it, but also just whatever I couldn't play. I used to, I didn't like, I don't think I liked practicing the stuff that you could play to get better. I always wanted the next hardest thing. Yeah, so yeah. I'd get a beat and then I'd want, cool, how do I make that harder? How, how like, give me something I can't play. Yeah, yeah. But then again, moving, moving from different students, uh, sorry, different teachers. I've, I've had quite a few, and I went from sort of the fun Matt Watson and then to a guy called Sam Catchlove, and uh, he was very, very into, into rudiments, and, and I remember sort of almost dipping there, being too much into that, mm -hmm. luckily getting three other sides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A mix though for me, it was playing along, playing with the band meant, meant I got the release side, and then luckily also loved the like more technical side. You see, so you say you started playing in a band straight away. So what? I mean, how did that band go? Like, did you? Did you? I guess you got together and practiced. Did you play any gigs or anything? Yeah, used to gig loads. When I was, I was like 15 or 16. I was in a band called Missing Theory. I just love things with the young names you have. <laughs> but uh, used to gig loads around all like Club 85 and just hitching a lot. Lecture, of, um, just like there's like a local scene for that. I remember we, we used to sound like Rage Against the Machine. Well, we didn't think we did, but people said we did, and then later on we realised we sounded like exact. That was clearly yeah, without cool. thinking. That was like, well, we had one guy that sort of did the whole half rap, half sing thing, and it's pretty rock rap at that yeah, age. Yeah. Obviously, when you started playing, you said you kind of got into a band straight away. Like, how did the playing in a band go from just like being together in someone, I don't know, someone's garage, like practicing to like? get to the point where you were playing like gigs? Uh, I think we just tried to jump into it. As soon as we as soon as we had songs that we could gig, we tried to. Mm -hmm. I remember I won, a, I won a competition in Lecture of was it David's bookstore. Yeah. They put us into a recording studio. So it's hilarious listening to it now. We thought that was the best thing ever. Took the kit down and everything. Mm -hmm. So as soon as we had that, we're then like, cool, we've got a CD. Next thing is, let's get on stage. And I guess from there you learn, you watch yourself back and then just, you start to mature, mm -hmm. so you start to go from, you write a song in one day and you go, cool, that's it, to then actually going, right, that, that might not be the best song mm -hmm. too quick, and you start to, I guess, analyse what you're playing more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slowly get better with that. Yeah. I guess that's how different you styles come in, like you said, we probably all didn't, we went from like rock and then different styles will come in. Mm -hmm. I guess you clash more with people because but it, but it makes better music. Do you feel because you got into a band pretty quickly, it kind of helped you with your like your 
your progress as a drummer. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, that's that's like the biggest thing. If anyone can play with other musicians, just do it. You yeah. can play. I mean, play along with tracks is that's another thing. Make sure you play along with things. But if you can play with someone, even if it's just just a mate on bass, it's just learning. Even if you're different different levels, I think it's the best thing to do. You start realizing why you're playing drums. I guess like yeah. when you're learning a film and yeah, someone tells you you have to you miss a beat. With a record, you can kind of catch up. Mm -hmm. When you're playing with someone, you realize how it affects the other person, or, or they affect you. How like someone else can can change the way you're playing. Yeah, it's like, I think it's the biggest thing. Yeah, and you realize like what type of feel you like, what type of beat you like, mm -hmm. more than you ever would just on your own. Nah, yeah, yeah sure. I think it's like the biggest thing. If you can play with someone, then then do. Like quite a lot of people I talk to who are learning, they're, they're really conscious that they aren't ready, that they're constantly waiting for that point where they can play like loads of songs. You don't need to do, like right? No, yeah, it just, well that's the same, like I said, my, obviously we're young and just starting, but my new beat, whatever it was, would be the next song. Yeah. And it's like, it's rare, especially if they're friends or anything, it's rare that you're going to play something and they're just going to like put you down, it'll just be, you just work out, you can work out how to simplify things as well. That was a big thing for me because I start playing something and then you'd realise he probably wasn't as good at that beat as you thought because you can't play it with someone else, but at home you can. So through senior school, like, what was like, your practice routine like? like? What sort of stuff did you practice and like, how often? Uh, I'm trying to think if I actually have much of a practice routine. I'd definitely be, I always wanted to turn up to the next lesson. If I was struggling with something with the lesson, that I'd want to have it the next time, so I'd put as much time with that, but then playing with the band as well. I'm trying to think if I actually had a routine. I don't think I took it or thought about it seriously enough to like think, today I'm gonna to learn this, today I'm gonna to learn that, but I was, I was always, I loved it, so I was always very into it. So I think I played, I played a lot. Well, I know that from getting complaints and things. I know that I was playing a lot, but. Uh, yeah, I don't know about a routine so much. I didn't take it as, as, as seriously to think about it like that at mm. that age. Mm. Um, but I'd always just learn the things that, the, that the, the teacher gave me. So I must have done a fair few throughout the week. I know that, yeah, when I came to the next lesson, I'd always have it. Or B, I'd have something else to add on to it. Mm -hmm. And then wanted to turn up and just do the same thing again. Yeah, yeah. So I know I would practice, but I don't know about routine so much then. Some people just kind of play songs. They love playing songs and they kind of don't really work on the technical stuff too much. Um, but I guess you're saying... Mine was actually more the technical stuff, I think because I found it hard to play the songs. Uh, I'm not sure why I really took it, I just put headphones on, but I remember always finding just I didn't have equipment to do it. A CD player. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I had jump. a CD player and some, yeah, really small headphones or something, and just wouldn't, yeah, it didn't work. Mm -hmm. So the, the lessons were almost for, for playing to the songs, and then at home was just for, I probably just played drums a lot. Mm -hmm. It was probably just a lot of just getting on the kit and Plan. seeing what happened, yeah. And do you remember what your first kit was? Oh no, uh, I don't remember what my first one was. I've got the image of it, but it was some. It wasn't. I know I had a, I had an old school Premier kit okay. that I found really cheap with all symbols. Put on for like two hundred pounds or something. Mm -hmm. All symbols, all stands. Old school. The Premier Royal. Yeah, yeah. that was a yeah. kit. Yeah, I had that it's red red kit. I had that for years though, because it was great. And as long as you reskinned it, mm -hmm. it made it sound good. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what my first one was. But it was like normal size bass drum with like a 10 inch, 10 inch tom and then a crazy, well I think it was like 16 or 18 but super low floor tom so it was just like Kaka, yeah. mama, doo -doo. <laughs> I remember hearing the recording that I did that I did at the studio and listening back to it and never thought about the sound of the kit before and then you hear it and it's like wow that doesn't that doesn't work, which is quite nice to find out, but not nice to find out after you record it mm -hmm. with the band. Yeah, no. Uh, so going through school, obviously you played with your. I mean, I guess it was your own band that you started up yourself with your friends. Um, did you play in any like school scenarios, like any school bands, like different genres and stuff like that? At senior school. Uh, I played in the big band later on. My I was weirdly, I was quite nervous for school stuff. I was really confident because I, like, I was doing gigs quite early before other people would but then the, like, the big band stuff I remember being quite nervous because there was older drummers there before right. so I come in I remember actually a lot of time thinking I can this is fine I can play this 
but being really scared to, it's a big regret of school actually then being scared to get up because mm -hmm. you, you sort of have to ask to get on and then asking to get on I always felt like it was telling them that I was better right but it wasn't at all now thinking back like, like it was never that mm -hmm. but I played in the big band in, in Nice Templar for a while did a couple of gigs of them uh, and then I did a GCSE music so they'd put you in bands and you'd have to do exams for that mm -hmm. but uh and then yeah, just the outside bands, whatever. I tried to play with anyone I could, basically. Right. There's always my one main band. And like, how did you find playing those other genres, like the big band stuff? Like, was that something? Like, was that a style of music you listened to, or did you just? No. In fact, that might have been one of the reasons. Again, I think I, I think I actually thought too hard into it being jazz. Right. I mean, not knowing. I got taught jazz, basic, but me not knowing. Like thinking I needed to be a jazz drummer to play in the big band, yeah. which again is actually not, it's, it would help in certain ways, but isn't true. Mm -hmm. Again, kind of wish I'd just not cared as much and jumped on and learned that way. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I did, luckily again, changing changing teachers or just having, I had really good teachers as I grew up. So I think I had the basic of all, of like little basics of styles. Yeah. So. I was more just nervous to jump on in front of anyone else than, than actually the drumming. Mm -hmm. The drumming itself was fine. Where did you go when you finished school? Like, did you go to college, university, or anything like that? I went to sixth form in Knights nice Templar still. Same school. And then that was basically, I basically did that because I didn't know what I wanted to do. Right. And half my friends were staying on, so I just stayed on just to stay on. And it was about then I started to realise that you could do drumming as a career. That was like new to me. This right. is where I think like the practice routine and stuff. Suddenly I sort of realised, yeah, it was like I can't remember who I talked to or something. It was like, wait, you can do that without being a rock, without being just the Chad Smith. The Chad Smith. Yeah. yeah, it was like you can actually do it. Yeah, like a lot more people can do it, and that's when I started practicing more. And then from then, that's when I realised I could actually study drums, specifically drums. Mm -hmm. So A level was almost like. Obviously, you get the grades and stuff, was, but it was I kind of suddenly realised that's pushing for that. A level was just a a thing because I wasn't sure what I was doing after right. school. Yeah, yeah, for the A level, and then I went to yeah music uni. Okay, well, um, so what was the music uni? ACM Academy of Contemporary Music okay. in Guildford, Surrey. Oh, nice. So I did that. I think straight after yeah straight after sixth form, and then I did I did a high diploma and then a degree because their degree is uh, accelerated degree. So I went through the three years of typical uni. Right. So I did the high diploma, which was great because it then meant that I was middle to top of, of the degree, mm -hmm. where I sort of, I could have gone straight into degree and been middle to bottom, and it was quite nice to do the three years and actually like be comfortable there. Mm -hmm. and that was great. Yeah, I think a lot of drummers study now. Yeah, they do. I recommend it. I know a lot of people. A lot of people finish music like music university and. and and have a lot to say about that college, there's, there's a massive difference, but for me it's just if you take advantage of it or not. You hear a lot of people talking about going to uni to play drums or guitar and they just expect to like be handed a job afterwards or or they like moan about the university because they didn't get that much out of it and for me it's just, you've got almost all of them, I went to ACM but you hear all the different ones, like you got these amazing facilities and tutors and stuff. If you, if you actually same with anything with the practicing thing, if you actually if you go and find time to talk to the tutors and practice, I think they're amazing. I learned so much. I became a completely different drummer from that. And then you can find so many contacts and things from them as well. I think people just don't take advantage. Um, okay, so you've, you you kind of taken all that experience, all that kind of um, tuition over the years, going through senior school and college and stuff. Um, so just let everyone know like what you're doing now, like with your drumming, like the kind of jobs you're doing over the last few years, and kind of how you got into that um, from kind of leaving ACM. Um, I like to say session musician because it sounds great, <laughs> but uh, I basically get put into bands, uh, either completely new people or already, I guess, established bands. It's all it's all covers. It's not original stuff, but I do. Um, it's been mainly in the Middle East, but I, tra I travel a lot with it. But I play as like the, the residential band right. at a certain venue. So normally a hotel in, say, I mainly, mainly seem to be in Dubai. Mm -hmm. So a hotel in Dubai will have to have, well, to, to serve alcohol in the first place, has to have a venue in part of the hotel. And will be that like residential band, so it'll be a club or a lot of, or actually like 
glamorized pubs. Right. So like a pub, but it's just so much bigger and you actually get people there to see live music five days a week. Right, and yeah. we'll play five or six days a week. So we're like, just you always go to that to see that band. Okay. And I move around different different countries and different venues, normally doing three to six months of the yeah, the resident band there. Yeah. Or if I'm not doing it in hotels, like I've done cruise ships and things. Same type of thing, you're like the band in this venue or the, the sort of hotel of hotel the uh, the cruise ship band again five or six nights a week. So and you've been you went out to the Far East as well, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Well, I did the cruise ship. I did the cruise ship around Japan, South Korea, and China. Right. Um, that's the only, and I've done little ships between like Amsterdam and Newcastle and stuff. Nice. People love to call them cruise. I call it a ferry. But it's still, it's still <laughs> awesome. It was like a week or two at a time. I think I did two months at once, which is quite intense. And then otherwise, I do yeah, mainly Middle East. So I've done like Bahrain, um, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, uh, and then tomorrow I fly to Qatar for the next one for three months. So in terms of getting into that, like, it's with an agency, right? Do you, like, and that's done? It's, 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 I've mainly been with one agency, but it's kind of, it's kind of word of mouth as well. Right. So the cruise ship, after I left Bahrain and decided to give it a break for a bit, and then just got asked from people that had seen me play, can I just replace their drummer? I see. Yeah. But for the other stuff, it's mainly been with, yeah, one agency that puts bands together, or if you can, same, the same band, so you don't have to rehearse and leading up to it. Yeah. And then they put you out for, for the gig. But then I've had it a few times, like the Hard Rock Cafe gig, we actually found out there. Again, so people came and saw us and then put us forward and we had to audition. So then you, we, we stay with the agency because then you do, so I did six months there and then we left. The agency would then have another country or venue or whatever to, to put us straight forward so we can sort of keep working. Mm. And then I have normally a month or two, sometimes more, sometimes less, in between each one, just right, yeah. sorting things out, which is when you see me. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and in terms of the uh, like, like getting into the agency and working with the agency, it's done by audition, right? Is it like? Yeah. And that, so you it's just... yeah. After I left uni, I decided or just going for everything, um, and then you need like a promo video first. They'll ask you for that just so they're not like wasting their time. And then, depending on what agency, normally how serious it is as well, you either have to go to them if you're close. But yeah, the audition for the main agency I did was, uh, yeah, I had to learn five songs um, and then just drove to Birmingham and they just put on the backing track with a kit and just played along to the songs. And they sort of asked you different questions, like, I sort of explained, I could play this in this style or this style, or they, they to be fair, they can, they can normally see quite quickly. I think I played very the first 20 seconds of most of the songs and I just stopped it and moved on because right. I can do that. I've actually worked with them now and made them make it harder <laughs> because I thought it was it was a lot of drummers were getting through and then later on you realise there was a problem. Right. So I, I put the rose out of the shuffle and oh, that's, oh, now, nice. that's now part of it, yeah. That's a test, isn't it? A true test. So in terms of like like what you're getting out of it, you're enjoying like travelling and like doing like stints like monthly stints out in these places, or is it quite tough? How are you finding it? It's both. I love it. I mean, my main thing is, um, for me, I'm, I'm making a living out of purely playing drums, which is just like the biggest thing for me. That's kind of, that was always what I wanted when I realised, well, when I realised it was possible. Yeah, so yeah. for that, every now and again, you just have to think that. And I'm, I mean, my, my job is getting on stage, often one hour to two hours a night, and that's, that's a job, it's great, and you're great friends. And you, it's in a bar as well, so it's a relaxed, relaxed environment. Mm -hmm. Especially the agency I work with, it's you know it's not crazy strict. Yeah. But um, it can be intense in the way that you go out for six months to a different country, and often if I'm put with the band, so I don't know anyone else. So the first time I went to Dubai it was terrifying because I, I there was a band already out there, and I went and replaced their drummer. Wow. So I turned up in this country, no idea what was what I expected, what was going on. Just had to learn the songs, and then you live in. A hotel or an apartment, and you just sort of cool. That's six months. Make yeah. friends, do whatever. Yeah. But uh, the pros and cons for me, the pros must be that way. It's a great lifestyle in the way that you you stay in the hotels and you get kind of everything for you. Right. So you get sort of accommodation and, and food, all the travels, all that pay for and things, and you get these normally these beautiful 
especially in the Middle East, you get these beautiful hotels that you stay yeah, in and yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you just play music and, and live there. But it can be intense. Like I said, you go, you do move, you move from home for big chunks at a time. There's tough times, some, like you gotta go and do six months in one country and often you don't quite know where you're gonna go, I mean you know the country, but what the place is gonna be like, or often what the band's gonna be like, because you're stuck with them for six nights a week. Yeah. They're the same people, so you rehearse with them, you either live with them if you get an apartment, or you're in the same hotel. Um, normally it's great though, because you're normally the same type of people, you're out there doing exactly the same um. thing. The, the perks you get with it. You normally go out and say in Dubai, it's basically always like a five star hotel you stay in, you get food, accommodation, like I said, like travel, and then you just, you play one to three hours, which for, which actually for musicians seems a lot uh -huh. to, to people working out, but, but yes, yeah, just five nights a week, that's, think of that's your job for me, it's great. You get everything, everything given to you basically, and then you just perform as long as you, as long as you do put in the work and things, for me it's it's great. Yeah. It's just like yeah, the long the long long stints. Okay. Weird ones are cruise ships actually. Yeah. It's because you're stuck on the cruise ship. But then I know again the pros and cons, you, you see so many different countries, you get to like travel the world. Uh -huh. So yeah, I mean for me traveling the world playing drums is yeah, it's it's good. Brilliant. It's good. <laughs> and in terms of like this next one you're going on, so obviously you're leaving tomorrow, like um, uh, where are you going and like what's it? Uh, what's involved in this next trip? This one is Qatar, it's going to be Doha. I've never been, I've done Middle East now, but I've never been to Qatar. Uh, this is a whole new band as well. So again, hopefully they're great. Well, I've met them, they are good people. Okay. <laughs> but, um, yeah, basically I've been told I need to learn, or I have this week, got 90 songs, and then every week we'll learn 10 songs or so until we have, because we're playing the same, same venue, right. you'd have a massive, that's one of the hardest part, mm -hmm. you've got to know about. 200 songs that you can sort of just put out wow. with, with that band. But, um, it's gonna be the same deal, six nights a week playing at more of a club, this one, I think, and then stay in the hotel. So in terms of like offering advice to any like younger drummers out there or people who are kind of um, a little bit earlier in their drumming career than you are, like what advice would you give them if they were kind of interested in doing what you're doing now? From, from learning from whatever uh, what was it called? Whatever stage, I'd say try, trying to learn a little bit of everything is great in terms of genres. Like you don't need to be, you don't need to learn everything about one, but just having like a foundation is really good. Okay. So I've had it where I've been thrown into suddenly a country night, and I'm, I'm not a country drummer, but I know enough to have like a couple of country chops or a couple of just to like get through. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to have that, but then not stress about that too much, and like. In learning, it's so cliche, but just to like make sure you're enjoying it, no. because it's, it's that sort of thing where if you tell someone to practice, if they're not, if they don't want to, they're not gonna. Or the same with actually playing. If you're playing, you can surprisingly hear it when someone's like heart's like it. Mm -hmm. You just get that on stage. But so with that, I mean, yeah, when you when you're getting taught, decide what you want to do, and you don't have to follow whatever. Like if like a teacher's saying something, I'd say actually tell them what you want to learn. And, and go that way. It will always, it'll always have like different different details, but find out what you like and go for that. And in terms of like uh, like selling uh, like drums to someone who was maybe considering starting to play, like how would you kind of yeah like what message would you give to them if they're like wanting to start to play? Uh, if you're wanting to start and you haven't, just go for it. Just have have a have a try. In my experience, it's, it's rare for someone to, to sit on a drum kit and, and have just a bash and not enjoy it. Uh, and yeah, just let everyone know your, like, like your future ambitions, like what your goals are, what you want to achieve. Uh, future big ambitions, I'd, I'd still love to do original stuff. Mm -hmm. I've always, when I'm not doing contracts, I come back and I play with certain people. Um, I could try to have a go at an original band before and I, I always want to do that again. In a, in a sort of more longevity, because I can't be doing this type of thing forever, like moving around countries so much. I'd love to have my own drum studio. I want to keep teaching drums, I love doing that. And then just having like a portfolio of, of different things. So like, if I have my own studio, I could record, teach there, but just keep gigging as much as I can. Mm -hmm. Obviously the bigger gigs, I'd love to do like a tour mm -hmm. with an original band, but just keep making a living out of drums as long as I can keep that up. 
think I have to like, I have to change things around so you have different avenues, but just to keep doing that. Yeah. And then obviously the bigger gigs, the better, naturally. Danny, I better let you go. You've got a flight to catch, but thanks for spending some time. Um, if people want to follow you or contact you, where's the best to reach you? Uh, Instagram, I'm starting to use more. I've got Danny Langston UK is my handle. Is it called? I think so. I think handle, called, yeah. and then yeah. I mean, contact. They just did through here. <laughs> yeah, true. Find out from this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. I post it on Instagram. That's the way. Way to follow. Awesome. Thank you. Nice one. Thank you very much.